is Monday, May the 2nd, 2022. I am James, you are you, we are here. Back again in the saddle, in the trenches, wandering through the jungle, speeding down the highway, but not the 401 that would connect Quebec to Ontario, more specifically Montreal to Toronto. We're talking about the information superhighway, otherwise known as uh, the internet. How was your weekend? Did you spend it with someone you cherish? I hope you did, because I am here to spend my Monday night with you. Because you, the audience, the fan base, the viewers, are whom I happen to cherish at this particular period in my life. It has been a while as Aaron Lewis, lead singer of 90s alt rock band Stained, once said. And why has it been a while? We have not been here in one week's time. That's right. We are getting used to the brand new spring schedule. If you're new to this show or you're wondering, hey, what's the spring schedule? The spring schedule is code for I can only do the show on Mondays because most Fridays I'm on stage performing in front of a live audience and Wednesdays while I'm working in order to pay my internet bill to make sure that this show can remain on Twitch for at least one day a week. Now, if you were connected and if you viewed these shows very crappy and inactive Instagram page, which you can find, of course, on Instagram at at home with James, you may have noticed that I announced that we will have a programming announcement tonight. And I got a DM immediately with a sad emoji face worried that it would be more bad news. And that's when it struck me. The only news in terms of programming that I give out on this GD show anymore is bad news. A couple weeks ago, I announced that Andy was retiring. Then I said, it's the brand new Wednesday schedule on At Home with James. We did it for two weeks. And then I announced, I can't do Wednesdays anymore because I need food to live. And in order to get the food, I have to work to pay for it. This is the voice. This is my internal monologue voice. The only news on this show is bad news. So when many people, I assume, saw that programming announcement announcement, they thought, here it is. This is it. He's going to announce that the at-home program is over. The show that people, they don't even get the name right. I had someone a couple weeks ago say, oh, I've seen your show, Brunch with James. Brunch. The show is on at nine o'clock at night. Some people at some point in time used to watch it Pacific Standard Time. Would have been 6 p.m. This is person going to brunch. Brunch with James. A couple weeks, Raquel Belmonte, by the way, is on the show tonight. What did she say a couple weeks ago? Every Wednesday with James? This woman has been on this show for almost two years now, called it Every Wednesday with James. And it used to be every Wednesday until I gave bad news. Maybe this is why people never get the name of the show right. We started it five days a week, then three, then two. Now we're down to one. Or are we? In any event, we are here tonight, and that is what matters. So if you're watching, and dare I say admiring what you are seeing tonight, I thank you for that. My heart to yours, tethered with an ethernet cable. What is happening on tonight's show? Much later on, the one and the only, Mr. Dimitri Kirez, it will be joining us, uh, apparently uh, from a location of which uh, I have yet to understand. We're waiting for him to to make his way into our production call, but Dimitri Kirez is going to be here. And now we take a moment to welcome a guest who has been here, as I mentioned, only moments ago, a multitude of times. She was not here last week. Again, a casualty of the new spring schedule, please welcome another one and only Raquel Belmonte to tonight's program. Raquel, it is good to see you again. Welcome to the week. How are you? Oh, yes. Welcome to Brunch with James. For me, Raquel Belmonte. Talk with James about, but hey, I, I, hey. Well, uh, James, do you ever think that maybe I get the name of the show wrong because I don't want to get too attached to it because you keep giving bad news? 
Well, and, and here's the thing. This is why tonight I intend on giving the opposite of bad news, not only good news, but exciting and surprising news. But I do have to say, Raquel, I very much enjoyed that faux uh, announcement you made uh, to the uh, sweet sounds of George Michael. Thank you. I wasn't even trying. That was fucked. Yeah, but I wasn't. So whatever. Okay, look, Imagine yeah, if again, I was. Uh, and and uh, for, for those of us who don't know, and by those of us, I mean the uninformed. Raquel, mm. how, how would you like to classify that you make a living? Because, of course, it, it feeds into the ease in which you gave that faux announcement. Thank you so much. Uh, what an honor to bring up one of the three things I always talk about. I'm a voice actor. Mm-hmm. Th- this pays my bills. Yeah. For and, now. And, that's, and that's why you did that with such ease. And uh, this is, again, for the first time on the show, we're officially going to congratulate you. For people who don't know, the, the brand new voice of the McDonald's My Rewards app <laughs> commercial. <laughs> Thank you so much. What an honor and a dream to finally get recognized. A lot of people, my family, I feel like they're the only ones who know. They always send me the commercial. I'm like, yeah, no, like I did it. Like, thank you. Yeah. Well, and and here's, here's the thing. This is, again, another thing that bonds us, Raquel, because you were the voice of a McDonald's commercial, and I was the principal actor of a Burger King commercial. James, look at this. Look at this. We're basically the same person. Yeah. What are we doing? What are what we was doing? Your, what was your big line in the commercial, Raquel? Mine was, you got to stack it. I love that. You should get that tattooed on your body somewhere. Oh, I, I, I don't need to because I already have. Whoa! <laughs> um, I think my, well, I know my first line. Introducing my McDonald's rewards. Ask me the rest because I, I don't know. It, and this is the thing, a trick of the trade. You're speaking oh, with a smile. That's the, hey, man, when I learned that, I took that with me and I, I hammer it every audition I do. I'm like, it makes a huge difference. Now, Hi. now we chatted about this uh, a couple of weeks ago. I recently did an audition for a voiceover uh, that I wasn't aware I was auditioning for at the <laughs> moment. Uh, 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 a friend of ours, and I'm not going to give out any detail because it might expose what this job is. Uh, asked me, hey, can you read this? And I did it while I was on the turlet going number two. Hell and yeah. then in one take, I got the job. That's real, pure, raw talent. Yeah. And yeah. this is, again, what bonds us. Not only am I tethered to the audience on a sentimental and emotional level, I would like to think that I am tethered to you with both talent, skill, et cetera, et cetera. I agree. It's that September 5th thing. I'm telling yeah. you, I bet we were born at the exact same time. You need to talk to your mom about what time you were born. Yeah, well, uh, let's see if she uh, remembers. She's often high on marijuana. Who isn't? Well, I, I would say that I'm not. I uh, that, that old uh, phrasing of the apple doesn't fall far from the tree could not be further from the truth as it pertains to a uh, little cutie. Oh, well, sounds like a you problem. Well, and, and this is the thing. That's what some may say. Some may say it's a it's a me success. But again, this is look the name of the show. Of course, is at home with James. It's not about me uh, tonight. But I do I do have to say that I'm happy with this rapport that we've got going on, Raquel. This is like a ping pong match uh, of the highest caliber. I love it. I feel great about it. This is the best rapport I've had all day. Well, okay. Now, uh, why is that? And before I jump in, uh, coming in from the chat, courtesy of uh, our friend and uh, I-, I would say legendary viewer at this point now, the real Andrew McKay quote, I'm high. Hell yeah. You better be. Honestly, I think it's good for you. Being high is fine. It's well, not even really a drug. I'm going to say Just this. Don't drive. Th- there, there is an amount of money that I'd be willing to take in order to, for the first time ever, because look, here's the deal. I know that I look and sound like a guy that uh, that, that passes the duchy on the left-hand side. Okay. That, that puffs the magic dragon. One more. That smokes God's herb. Okay. But I never have. I never have. I look like someone who should smell like cigarettes, but I don't. I look like a person who should always have a Labatt 50 in my hand. I have never entertained outside substances, but for a certain amount of money, I think there is something to be said about me. Uh, Perhaps for the first time, only time, and last time, uh, uh, going going to where the gods could only dream of on this show. (laughs) 
taking a magic carpet ride, if you will. One more. Sucking down a bit of the Hendrix. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. We'll go with it. Mm -hmm. Are you saying you'd like to do drugs on your show? I'm not saying I would like to, but if I was going to do it, I feel like, and again, it would require a lot of money to get me to do it. James, the next, the next thing I book, knock on wood, everyone hold me accountable. The next thing I book, I will pay you whatever you want to, to take an edible one edible mm. and I'll do it with you. So you're not alone. Like, well, so we'll you're saying it has to be you. something that I eat and not something that I. Yeah. Okay. If I'm so, paying you, you're doing an edible. Okay, great. So uh, it stands to say that I will not go one toke over the line. No, but you'll probably, you'll, oh, you'll be over many lines, but it'll All be right. nice. You might love it. Oh my God. What if I turn you into a drug addict? Oh, well, then this this uh, will become a uh, one of those Canada heritage moments about how it's <laughs> not good to do drugs. Look what happened to this guy. It could happen to you. Now, Raquel, you said yes. that this is the best rapport that you had had all day. Prior to getting on the air, I asked you how you were doing. You began to recount a story, and I said, whoa, Nelly, this feels like this is broadcast content. Raquel, would you like to discuss this tonight? I would love nothing more. Mm -hmm. So do you want me to do it now? Because I'll dive in. I'm ready to dive. My of course, arms are give, out. A, give us a lead in and uh, just know in true James fashion, I will interject with, whoa, now let's analyze this for a second. There might be a bit of that, but let's get into it. I love that. I barely go on Facebook, James. I go on every now and then to like check the the Facebook uh, improv groups I'm, on, I'm in mm -hmm. just, to, just to see um, things. But today I went on right before I clicked on the link. And I found out that the guy I lost my virginity to, who has a micro penis, again, sorry to offend if that's like a bad thing, but he was well, mean well, to me. So hold I think on it's okay now, to say, I, I, let's 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 back that ass up for a second. My ass or whose ass? This just that's just what we this in the at home world that just means let's rewind. For like a the second. royal yeah. dad ass. Yes. Yeah, the, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, a global statement. Now, now you talked about. Um, not meaning to offend, although you haven't said anything that is disparaging. Okay, yeah. I mean, maybe because I'm judging and I'm the problem. I've always been the problem. But I don't know. You know, some some dudes get really offended uh, when you talk about penis size. Well, okay. Well, here's a follow-up question. Is it is it offense or is it maybe just insecurity coming out? Because I, are you saying that some men get offended if you talk about other men's penis size. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So if you Maybe were like, oh, oh, you know, Andy's penis is so big or so little, you're saying that someone else named, I don't know, Andrew would go, come on, don't talk about him like that. <laughs> that caught me so off guard. I was trying not to, <laughs> trying not to laugh. No, wait, what? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm just wondering wh wh where where do you think the offense is coming from here? Um, I, no, I think you're right. I think a lot of the times it comes from insecurity or like if you're talking about somebody else's dick, whoever you're talking to, I think they start to think about their own dick and then they compare it to the one okay. that you're talking to and they're like, sure. well, that's not, a, what are you talking about? You can, do, you can do so much with that. And I'm like, no, like I'm very, James, how long have you known me for? Two years now? Yeah, two years. I'm an open book. I'll talk about anyone's dick. I don't care. Sure, I'll offend some people, and I'm sorry. Fine, uh, but I I feel I, like you, I, you keep going back to this offend thing, but you haven't said anything offensive. You just, haven't disparaged anyone. Okay, I know, but you know, here maybe I'm just so used to to people being like, "Well, you man, you can't control how big your dick is." <laughs> maybe that's what's replaying in my head. I don't know. Anyways, I feel like we're getting caught up. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I, I'm trying to put you on the track of feeling yes. comfortable in telling the story. You haven't said anything I'm wrong. comfy, baby. And I will say that people are allowed to like whatever they want to like while while remaining respectful of others. And I'm, I'm here to say that I don't think that you have been disrespectful. Okay, amazing. So now we're going to get really into it. So I had seen, prior to losing my virginity, I had seen dicks before. I've seen them. I touched them. Heck, oh. they ended up in other, hey, fine. No, fine. I won't. But that, that, I remember that being like, that's different. That's different. And that's what, that was, that was the first 
uh, what thing that yeah you lost your virginity is is yeah. the, the words that it appears you're struggling to uh, to find now I can i ask you a question I, yes can we just give this person a fake name so we can keep referring to this person can we give them a fake name here's what i'm scared of i'm scared that i'm gonna fuck the fake name up and i'm gonna right oh, okay so l- why don't we just call him uh Micro-penis. let's just call him mr Ugh. Okay. Mister. Well, uh, you're Mister. Raquel, you're the one you're the one making it perverted. I'm just <laughs> That was good. Put it on my demo. What about Mr. X? Mr. X. Ugh, that made me sick. I can Yeah, okay, fine. So, I well, we could call him Mr. X the first. I'm going to call him the guy I lost my virginity to. I think that makes it <laughs> I I'm gonna, I'm, and, and since, 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 since people often uh, also coming in from the chat, Thomas Barnwell is suggesting, quote, Mr. Micro. <laughs> Mr. Micro is cool. And it, it hits, it hits all the points. Okay. So can I ask you a question about Mr. Micro now? Ask me anything. Are you throwing the term micro penis around? Or would you say that if this person now, again, I'm, I don't want to speak out of turn, would you say that this is what this person would be diagnosed with if they were like, I think, okay, so you're saying, okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah. and I like, I consulted with friends after and uh, recently also, because you know, when you meet new people and you overshare and you talk about like, you know, stuff like that, you learn, oh, that was what that was. Okay, anyhow, um, yeah, wait, what am I saying? So- I found out prior to coming on to tonight's show at home with James, not brunch with James, that he got married today. Mm-hmm. Today or on the week? I don't know. That's I saw it and nice. I was like, yeah, that's fine. That's nice. But like, okay, maybe it's my preference, but like, like, Like his wife has to have sex with what, Raquel? No, you know, you know, you know, Mister. You know we can't. Wait, I'm am I Mister now? No, I don't know. Yeah, I'm you're, spiraling. You're making me <laughs> Mister. We're talking about Mister Micro here. Yeah, you know it'd be so funny if I also got a coming message, in from the chat like... right now, courtesy of Thomas Bartwell. Quote: Congrats to Mister and Mrs. Micro <laughs> for their wedding. <laughs> I'm so ne- sorry. I'm checking my. I'm like getting nervous. I'm like, what if he's watching this? I unfollowed him and removed him off of everything except for Facebook. Okay. Apparently, a while ago, because he was very rude to me. I'm sorry. He was rude. Okay. Um, well, can I can I ask you? Is that is that what's playing a part in this? Because look, here's the deal, Raquel. I think that even if this person happens to have what some might refer to as a micro penis, <laughs> he's still entitled to love and to be married. Well. Really? <laughs> well, okay. It's, this is again. This is my follow up. Are you are you reacting that way because this person who happened to have this, um, you know, endowment, is it because they were rude to you? No, honestly, I looked and I laughed. I was like, oh, and then I thought about the penis thing. Like that's like be like why, like that's your that's the dick you chose. But now I'm thinking. I'm like, wait. I'm a way better person than he was. I also haven't talked to him in like over 10 years. Like I want to say, like I lost, uh, I was 19. Was I 19? Well, 10 years ago, you would have been 20 or 19 going on 20 or 20 going on 21. I think I just turned 19. Got it. I just turned 19. Yes. So it was a very long time ago. We have not seen each other. Maybe he turned nice. But now I'm thinking, I'm like, you fuck you for getting married before me, you cuck. Okay. Now, now this is this is where we're getting into the uh, the territory where I can no longer justify your verbiage. <laughs> <laughs> Coming you know, into the chat, courtesy of High Score Run, we've got quote very rude microaggressions. <laughs> <laughs> so good. This is a this is a feisty chat tonight. Hey, you asked for it. Raquel, can I ask you what, what Mr. Micro did to be rude or unkind to you? Because I, I want to look at this through an older Raquel's lens. Sure. What was yeah. rude? Because I think if we, we take a trip down memory lane, if we got into the time machine, 
we we often reflect on things that maybe hurt us at the moment, but then thought, oh, well, I under maybe understand why that happens. What what did this this Mister Micro do? He <laughs> he wishes his dick made that sound. It would be more of like a like just barely. Uh, anyway, mm, too much bounce. Sounds too big still. That's a deep, mm, I think we're being too kind. That sounded like someone <laughs> using some type of like slingshot in the, the Saskatchewan prairie lands. <laughs> so uh, why, why was he mean? He was mean because he, he basically led me on. He told me he liked me and then just fucking gaslit me. And that, I mean, I got gaslit a lot growing up and also like, you know, every relationship I've ever been in. But with, I know, I is that a me problem? Probably, I don't know. Um, but with him, it was just, he was so fucking mean. And I tried, James, I'm the kind of, I'm the kind of person, if I'm not cool with something, I'll, I'll ask about it. I'm not going to get mad. I'm going to ask. And well, can I ask you what you were not cool with? That he was, he just started being so mean to me. And, it, can I, and again, we're, me we're, 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 we're going to, we're going to get all of the skeletons out and then we're going to yeah. bury them for good. Now, I mean, they're, they're buried. I feel like now, they're just now, pulling now, them out and being like, ha, 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 and then yeah, putting them this back. This is what we're going to do. We're, we're going to get rid of them. Can okay. I ask, can I ask wh- how this person was rude or mean to you? Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he was still talking. I remember, I think, <sighs> Yes, he was still talking to his ex girlfriend. I think I they had just broken up or something, and I don't know. But he was still like, "No, like that's done." He never really defined. Now looking back, I'm like, I don't remember if he ever, if we ever talked about like what is this. Um, but he knew I liked him. He knew I that. He knew I liked him. And do you feel that he took advantage of this? Oh, for sure. And for what? To give me sex I couldn't even feel? You know what I mean? And like, hey, it was my first time. I probably was tiny as fuck. I should have felt everything. So, oh, that was so gross. That was so gross. Perhaps perhaps on some level, it doesn't even count as losing your virginity. I didn't count it, actually. I usually count the second person I slept with because I was like, okay, that's what that's supposed to feel like. Now, now, let me ask yeah. here. Now, looking at this through 30-year-old Raquel's lens, was it like, oh, well, we were young. That's, you know, we were young people making young person decisions. Do you think looking back now, he probably looks back, Mr. Micro, of course, and thinks, oh, I was unkind in that moment. I was a, I was a dumb young man. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I really don't. I don't think so because I do remember like quite soon after he completely ghosted me, not ghosted me, but he was being very mean to me. And when I confront, I was like, Hey, what's happening? Like, you're, I feel like you're being really weird with me now. He'd be like, fuck it. He told, he said, fuck you. You're being fucking rude. Like went off on you're saying he said F you. Yeah. You're being effing rude. He said, you're being fucking rude. Now, and I was like, coming in from the uh, chat, courtesy okay. of the real Andrew Mackay, uh, he writes, and I'm going to clean this up a little bit. No, quote, no, don't. He had that tiny, mean penis energy, <laughs> and uh, instead of penis, it's the D word. The one, the one that has the uh, begins with the D, ends with the K, and has an I and a C in the middle. Dick. That's correct. You couldn't have just said that. That's like a man's name. I, 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 I don't curse on the show. It, I've it, cursed, I've cursed under five times on this show. Hey man, five's the, is five your lucky number too? I wouldn't say that I have a lucky number, but I can adopt five of it if it will bond us in a greater way. It will, say it is. It is my lucky number. Five is my yes. lucky number. I love it. Anyways, okay. I don't know where I was going with that. But anyways, he was very mean to me. I remember soon after I was like, ew, get fucked. Um, he, when I stopped talking to him, he would like send me really fucked up messages. I won't get into those because those were dumb but what were they were they perverted messages were they feisty messages or were they kind of stalker messages they were like like being me like i remember one time he's like i'm outside your house and i was like what and he falls into the stalker message category but he wasn't outside my house fake stalking i was like what the fuck is this like ew and i think i think he might have been a year or two younger than me now that i'm thinking about it Okay, so so he, he may have been older. he may have been seventeen years old. So no, might... he was a year young. He was a year younger than me. Okay, Ew, so... am I a predator? 
Uh, no, I don't think you're a predator unless oh, he was no. maybe, you know, 13 years old, 14 years old. If you were 19 and he was 18, Raquel. I think I deserve everything bad that happened. Anyways, okay, but I saw shortly after we stopped talking that he started dating the person that he was dating before. And I remember being like, you fucker, like, what? But he was easy to get over because I didn't like him that much. Um, And I feel like, yeah, it was all uphill from there. Now, can I- hogs, the biggest hogs. We love a big dick. And that's what I got after. You went from one side of the spectrum to the other. Oh boy. I don't think I've gone back. Have I? I don't remember it. Anyways. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Hold on. You asked. I'm uh, you, you asked. Well, I'm it, was, telling it, was, you. it was just the, I don't remember part. That, well, that, I was that. thinking of, I was thinking of this one person. Um, <laughs> I was thinking of one but uh, no, no, he was good. He was fine. All anyway. right. Okay. Well, Raquel, do you feel better having having gotten through this stuff? What do you mean? Like, ha- I think it's fucking hilarious. I'm, I'm going to talk about it, it forever. Okay. Well, this is good. You, you're you're past the point where you're upset, and it's like it's it's a funny time in my life. I mean, I'm not upset about any of it now. Well, if you if you are, you can you, Raquel, you let it out, right? No, I know things. Like have, I, said, I know. I know that there's been tough times on this show, right? There's been specifically with you. A lot of feelings, a lot of emotions. You know, we don't have to get into the Andy stuff, but you know, well, it's been there's been trying times. Yeah, I, is that how you view me? As somebody who's always complaining. Now, Raquel, I want to. I want to jump. Hysterical right, woman. I want to jump right to the chat here. There's a couple comments right coming from Naive Adventures. Uh, they write, "quote Who actually liked their first time? I think it's possible to enjoy it." Really? I don't know. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Well, that's because true. Mine Your was first funny. time experience was with uh, a gumdrop. Essentially. Actually, if I'm going to compare it to anything, fuck, I don't have a chapstick here. It was like the size of a chapstick. And like, honestly, I, I remember th- putting my hand on it like oh. around and I was like, maybe he's just not hard. And then it was hard. Yeah. And I, yeah, it was a whole fucking thing. Can I say that I was expecting something smaller? Oh, and frankly, the, the chapstick sounds like, you know, oh man, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the, the, the Nivea, the Nivea chapsticks, so they have a little bit more girth. Not that. No, 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 not that. I want you to think of like a standard fucking Burt's Bees, not any of the special ones, Blistex, like the original, right? A little like a Blistex. Yeah. Like a smaller Blistex. It was, like, it was big... basically a, a pack of certs or Rolades. Yeah, maybe more Rolade. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Maybe so more, more, Rolade, more yeah. of a Rolade than a cert. What about Tums? No, too thick, too girthy. All right. So, so I this felt is... nothing, which is so fucked because a little virgin over here. Anyways, who cares? Gross. This is probably the most disgusting I've been on this show and the most vulnerable. I, I don't think it's the most disgusting. I think we have to remember the time you brought, uh, baby onesie samples and one of them had an again a again full erect and veiny penis it looked it looked like a snickers bar it was a cartoon dick it was you guys made I it wouldn't know we, had, we like had to blur I it out it. because we that would have been the final episode our 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 channel would have been scrubbed from twitch yeah it, it, whatever i, I, I would say i will say this though i do think it's the most vulnerable you've been and i i, I really feel uh, I, I feel very touched that you would expose such vulnerability on this show. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, after last week or the week before, when you asked me how I wanted to spend Easter and if I wanted kids, I, that's all I've been thinking about. Yeah. No, no. I thought maybe I should be, maybe I should be more vulnerable. Um, Coming in from the chat right now, quote, thank you for sharing Raquel. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, what else do you want to know about this? Well, that's it. Like he's married. I just thought it was, I think it's funny. Mm -hmm. I think it's funny. You know what else I think is funny? I'll be 31 this year, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And I just learned from uh, my mother and a bunch of other people in my family that they start going through menopause when they're 40. So I thought, uh uh-oh, uh-oh, do I get it? What am I doing? Well, now, uh, I guess- Smoke weed every day. Yeah, <laughs> I, guess, right. I guess you know I guess I guess that, that is ultimately 
what you do now before you hit menopause? And that the answer is, quote, smoke weed every day. Hell yeah, bro. Well, Raquel, how do you feel uh, getting everything out tonight? Good. Is that it? Raquel, we've probably been talking for about 20 to 25 minutes. I feel like you're gaslighting me. That's so but fucked. It no is not. It is. Didn't. It is. 9 39 p.m we probably started this show at about 9 05 i probably well, brought you the, on two to three minutes into talking your monologue was like 20 minutes it was not a that's 20. insane james i can't keep going off like this like you can't use it's like you set me up to look like a dumb fuck and then now now what raquel I now not- i just have to go I did not do a 20 minute I've been on for 10 minutes. I have been on for 10 minutes. I just got word from your tech guy, my favorite tech guy by the fucking way. And he said, I was on for 10 minutes. So I think I deserve another It has not been 10 minutes. Oh, get fucked. James, I didn't feel good about that. Yeah, I I, I would have assumed so. I could see it, right? I'm and so this sorry. is a moment. Do you feel better about yourself? You're falling in line with all the other people on the show. The Wait, people- time out. Yeah. That's sick. You brought up Andy how many times? Twice? Three times? Well, I brought up Andy Asaf once. No, you didn't. To me, three times. Remember the rule we came up with last time? The more you bring up Andy, the more time I get. Because no, no, now I- he's not on. Hold up, but that I am not mm-hmm. done. I am not done. He's not here anymore. He's mm-hmm. gone. But the rule was he ha- you have to talk about me to him because I'm tired of wasting time, I'm tired of wasting time. So now every time you bring him up, which I think was three times, you have to add time to my slot. I don't care. Now, I mentioned Andy from the show once, but I used the name Andy and Andrew earlier. You knew that- what you were doing. I never you gave- knew. I- you fucking knew. Raquel, there are many Andys, right? My teeth look yellow. What the fuck? <laughs> That's for me to deal with after. Uh, yeah, that is for you to deal with. Now, uh, coming <laughs> in from the coming in from the chat here, we've got quote Raquel. It's been at least fifteen minutes, and that's from Naive Adventures. Thank you. We've also got from High Score Run quote Raquel can come back on Wednesday. Sadly, you can't because, of course, we don't have a show on Wednesday. Then we got from from Thomas Barnwell quote If Raquel is that bad at judging time and space, maybe it wasn't so micro. No, 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 Thomas, don't gaslight me. I know what I saw and touched. Raquel, this is the third person you've accused of gaslighting tonight. Why are all of you gaslighting me? Why do I keep coming back? Ugh. I'll tell you why, Raquel. Because you and I are tethered together. Yeah, but you better, how many minutes? I get three extra minutes? Make it worth my while. Well, you, we've already done the three extra oh, minutes since I have heard. Raquel, can I say something, Raquel? Fine. I really appreciate you. Fine, I appreciate you too. Oh, well, I appreciate that you said it the way that I like to say it. And I try to say it the way that you like to say it. And now we've got the best of both worlds. You and I Fine. are like a raisin oatmeal cookie. Sturdy and delicious that is you know i've had people compare me to a lot of awful things and oatmeal raisin cook that's the worst kind of cookie this is worse and worse just my let favorite. me go let me die <laughs> let me go dimitri turn turn my camera off i can't fucking do this anymore raquel if it means anything before we let you go coming in from the chat quote your teeth look great thank you oh from here they look good Raquel, uh, thank you so much for being here tonight. And hopefully we're going to talk next week and maybe you and I can uh, resolve whatever conflict that we're having with another team meeting featuring uh, David as well as uh, Marilyn. Oh my God. Don't tell Dave I said Dimitri was, my- oh no. Now I have some, I'm, fuck, I'm spiraling. Okay, I got to go. Bye. Bye Raquel. Take care and have a good Welcome night. Baby, take control now. We can't even slow now. We don't have to go Welcome to my- and we're back. What you heard was music from Flo Rida as well as one isolated fart sound effect. Of course, it is Monday night. You were watching At Home with James. I said that I had a programming announcement. Now, weeks ago when I announced the spring schedule, I said, keep your eyes and ears peeled for surprise episodes because we're going to do what we can to jam pack the schedule when we've got the time to do so. And that is why I am not only happy, but I am excited and dare I say,
proud to announce that we will be back for a second time this week. And that happens in less than 24 hours from tonight when we bring you a very special Tuesday night surprise. The surprise is no more because I have revealed it. The confetti is popping out of the balloons tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Who's going to be here? Well, Dave Kaufman is going to be here. You know him. You love him. He used to be Raquel's favorite technical director. No more. He will be here tomorrow as well as I. So why don't we say that you're going to be here too? Hmm? Maybe you tell your mom, dad, auntie, unky, brother, sister, Grammy, grampy. Tell your best friend, maybe, just maybe, even your worst enemy that we will be back for a Tuesday night surprise edition of the show that won't go away. But before we go away tonight, it is time to welcome our second and final guest to tonight's program. Coming into us from an undisclosed location, please welcome Dimitri Kirez to tonight's show. Hey, Dimitri. Down a western bay, and it serves a hundred ships a day. Lonely sailors pass the time away and talk to about their homes. Hey, oh! And there's a girl in this harbor town, and she works laying whiskey down. They say brandy, fetch another royal. She serves them whiskey and wine. The sailors say, Brandy, you're, you're a fine, fine girl. girl. What a good life you would be. What is what? What? Well, your eyes, they can see a sailor. From the sailor, sea, but oh. Hey, James, how's it going, Dimitri, buddy? how's it going? I'm doing well. You're uh, you're not at an undisclosed location. You are uh, oh, having shit. another Sorry. At- Sorry, hold on. I got I'm not doing it in the right place. I'll be right back. Just say What are you doing? Are you working the karaoke machine? There we tonight? go. Oh, okay. I bring gifts from north away. You say brandy, you couldn't stick away. She sucked the on her nuts. She said she had my cross, my penis. Oh, so you're playing with the lyrics of looking glass, brandy in brackets, you're a fine girl, Dimitri. If I if I didn't know correctly, you just staggered out of the karaoke room of one of your favorite watering holes. Dimitri, this is not an undisclosed location. Would you like to let us know where you are? I'm at old Pat Gettys. Pat you're Gettys. back at Pat Gettys. So you were here a couple Fridays ago, and you're back again uh, Monday night. Is that a night to enjoy at Big Pat Gettys? I haven't left. I haven't what? left. What do you mean you haven't left? Yeah, you're. Well, hold on, you're wearing the same outfit you were wearing when you were last at Pat Getty's, which is a watering hole, aka a bar in Montreal. What are you doing there? I'm just keeping the good times rolling, James. You know, this is such. A, it's a classic establishment. <laughs> oh, Pat, yeah, just, is that the same drink you've been drinking for over a week? I'm still uh, this. I'm still nursing. There's still a good head on this, you know, and I'm still I'm nursing this, you know, because it's. You know what they say about Guinness? What? It never goes bad, you know? Yeah, well, I like that you're drinking a Guinness, but you're wearing a Sleeman sweater. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's my dad's, you know, back, back when he used to come down old Pat Getty's with his buddies, and they used to get all, all ripped rip decked and tired, and, you know, and they used to drink the same Guinness as me. But that, that's just Pat Getty's, you know, it's a family business. Tru- yeah, truthfully. Pat Getty's is a family business. Dimitri, can I ask, you've been, have you been sleeping at the bar every night? Oh, dang it. Hold on. I got to put a quarter in. It's my turn. Hold on, boys. I'll put a quarter in. It's your turn. There's nobody else there. Uh, People are coming. People are coming. Oh. All right. You know, the the thing I love most about this song is that it always rocks. And there's no lyrics. Uh, You know, it's really easy to enjoy at karaoke. There's nothing that... There's nothing that goes smoother. There's nothing that goes smoother. Yeah, it looks like nothing. Looks like nothing's going smooth tonight at Pat Getty's. Dimitri, <laughs> it looks like you're absolutely sloshed, man. Brother, it's, it's what, almost man. as if I'm looking at you through the eyes of a drunk. More people are coming. 
Hold on. All right. Well, let me get out of the karaoke room because somebody needs it. Somebody needs a... Oh, shit. Oh. Somebody needs a room. Hold on. Let me just... Let me go to my... Oh, I don't know. There okay, so you're back in the billiard uh, room. Dimitri, why are you still at... Why have you not left? Oh, you know, uh, you know, you know, a guy like me, just, you know, I like to have a lot of fun. You know, that's the thing about that. Yeah. 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 Relax, yeah. You know, I like to have a little fun over here. Well, what's been going on since uh, since last Friday, man? You've basically been at a bar for uh, this is the ninth day straight. What have you been up to? Just having, just rocking, you know, just having a blast with the guys. And... Oh, James, I'm in bad, brother. What do you mean you're in bad? Oh, fuck. Uh, What's going on with your fly? My pants are undone. I'm getting blasted off because I can't. I lost my button. I lost my button playing pool and I can't. I, I can't find it. Dimitri, man, why don't you just go home? No, I can't. Just what do you yet. mean you can't, Dimitri? You don't have to keep the party going on 24/7, nine days a week. Yeah, well, I, I I would go home, but. James, I got, I got, uh, I've got involved with, uh, with some, with some, uh, some, some bad people, personally. Oh, now, this is what I worried about when you gave us the tour of Pat Getty's. This looks like a bar where people who maybe have low moral fiber hang out in. Yeah, I think I'm one of those people, James. I'll be truthful with you. What, now, what happened? What type of trouble did you get yourself into? Oh boy! All right. Well, let me let me take you to the scene of the crime. Just come with me. I'm scene of move. the crime. I'm just gonna move you really quick. Oh boy. Yeah. You remember these ladies? Well, yeah. I, I remember the ladies, of course. Hold on. Just toss the quarter right at it. Yeah. We have we have Brenda. You remember her? I remember her. What was her name? I don't remember offhand, but I remember that you referred to these video lotto machines as ladies. Yeah, there's Brenda. There's Natasha. And over there, that minx is Anastasia. Yeah, and well, right back, and right yeah, over Yeah, I remember here. this one. That's, uh, that's Maxine the Mean Machine. Oh, that's Maxine the Mean Machine. The mean machine. Yeah, she's been, as I recall, known to suck a man dry. I, I, your word's not mine, brother, but let's just say... You're not wrong. Oh, now, now, Dimitri, it sounds like what happened. You lost all your money feeding the machines with quarters. Yeah, I got involved. I got involved with, with you know, some some, some ne'er-do-wells, some not nice people here at the bar, and they're, they're not letting me go home. What happened? You got involved. Were you hitting them up for cash? Yeah, well, I lost a little bit of money having such a good time here at old Pat Getty's, and I lost, uh, I lost some cash. And now they won't let me go home. They said, they I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bust your knees unless you get all your money back. Oh, and, and even worse, you're never allowed in Pat Getty's. Pat okay, Getty's, so if Pat Getty's has changed. Yeah, it's, yeah, a lot has changed in the past nine days, so if I understand correctly, you lost all your money playing the lotto terminals. You borrowed some money from some, as you mentioned, ne'er do wells. Yeah. And now they won't let you leave the bar until you win your money and the money they lent you back. And also you're banned from the bar. Which is the worst part. Which is the worst part. Because Pat Gettys, you know how important this bar is to me, you know? Dimitri, how about this? What if you, because again, I was supposed to go, but you never got back to me with the coordinates. What if you just give me the address? I will come and I will give you the money so you can pay the guys back. Let's just get you out of this situation. If if all you have to do is pay them back, I will help you. This is a gentleman's bar for gentlemen and well, and ladies. Everyone's welcome at El Paguetis. But this is a, this is this is my mess, and I gotta clean it out. I'm gonna yeah, but it doesn't up. sound like it doesn't sound like you're gonna be welcome there anymore unless you get some help. So if all you have to do is pay back your debt, let me help you pay it back. With all uh, with all due respect, James, I don't need it. Why? Because if my dad and his buddies taught me anything at old Pat Getty's, is that there's a knife in the second stall right behind the turlet, and two that if you lose a game of pool, 
it's it's on you to pay up for the round. Well, how much money do you own? Do I own or do I owe? So do you owe? Oh. What? How much money, right, do you owe to the people that lent you money? Uh, no, dude. Do me- Don't go back to the machine. No, I just have to put in and just, uh, hold on. I just got to put in, I just got to put in a little bit because I'm on a hot streak right now. You're on a hot streak? Well, that's good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm only down five bucks. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Natasha. All right. Six dollars down, but that's not bad. But you're only down six bucks? That's how much you, you gotta pay back is six dollars? Six dollars, but that's ah that's a king's ransom in these parts, James. I came in with very, very much and I've lost it all away. Six dollars means a lot to these sons of bitches. Yeah, but Dimitri, again, if you won't let me give you six I'll give you ten bucks if it's gonna make this go away. If that's all you have to do, and that's all you have to do, then with let me all help due you do respect, it. James, I know you're a stand up guy but i need to get myself out of this mess okay okay so how are you gonna get yourself out of the mess because it sounds like you've had nine days to get out of it and the mess just keeps getting dirtier and dirtier the mess keeps getting dirtier and dirtier hey, you're talking about knives and bathroom stalls yeah oh oh well, spe- well, hold on a minute i just look i i, I have a plan <laughs> i have a plan all right i'm gonna all get right. myself out of it all right Ow. i just well, I need to I need to think. Okay, I'm gonna go to the washroom really quick. All right, just give me a second. There it is. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dimitri, just make sure you shut the light off when you're done. Was that? Make sure you shut the light off when you're done. I can see it on the wall. There's the rule. Please shut off the light. You want me to shut off the light? Yeah, when you're done, it says it on the wall. Where? Look, just take care of your business. Take care of your business. Just keep talking to me. Keep talking to me. Yeah, you want me to talk while you're doing it? Well, yeah. What do you mean? Okay, just take care of business. All right. Yeah, Dimitri, I think that... Oh, God. I think that... If you're talking about finding knives when all you owe is six, don't drink while you're peeing. If all you owe is six bucks, I don't think you have to go down a pathway of uh, of violence and stuff like that. I agree. Listen, I'm not trying to start anything, all right? These assholes are the ones who started it. I'm just trying to fix it. Okay, but you're going to fix it. It seems like you can't win your money back. No, I'm going to win the money back. I'm just having a bad hand Okay, look, right just, just, I can't talk to you while you're peeing, so just finish your leak and we'll talk. I'm almost done. I'm about 50% done. 50? Yeah, yeah, but it helps when you talk to me. All right, well, Dimitri, the only thing I want, I I just want to say I'm worried, right? You, you've been at this bar for over a week. You're drinking, you're getting into trouble, you know. All right. What? You said that you've been drinking, you're in the bar, I'm worried. Yeah, I'm, you don't have to be worried about me. Look, I'm having a great time. Okay, I always have. Uh, now, coming in from the chat, I didn't notice this, but uh, the real Andrew Mackay mentions, Dimitri, someone is taking your photo in the mirror. What the hell? Oh, yes. Someone's in there. Oh, my God. Pictures. Yeah. Someone's in there taking pictures of you. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, don't that's... forget to shut the light off. Where does it say that? I it mean, this is... To your right. To your right, it says, please shut the light off. I don't see it anywhere. That's it's written old, on the wall. Uh, that's old Pat Dimitri, Giddy. Just get out of there. You got a peeping Tom taking pictures of you. It's Pat Giddy's been taking pictures of me. I got to get out of here. This place is crazy. Yeah, because they probably want to take your picture, put it up on the wall. Oh, and after Lord of mercy. It's going to say, don't let this man in after you get banned. Oh, God. God, this place is a nightmare. I don't know if Pat Giddy's for me anymore. I, mean, sure, I, like yeah, I, boys, but... I don't think it's for you. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna send an Uber to go pick you up. No, you don't know where I am. Well, just tell me. It's a secret location. I told you. Uh, oh. I'm drunk. Look, okay, if you pick me up, I'm gonna piss inside the Uber, and I have to pay the guy. I don't have that kind of money. I'm already down fifty bucks. 
Dimitri, you're already pissing in front of people taking your photo in the bathroom behind closed doors. I didn't ask the guy to take the photo. If I had asked the guy to take the photo, I would have charged him and then I wouldn't be in this mess. Look, how do we resolve this, Dimitri? Because we're running out of time. I want to help, but it seems like you don't want help. So I feel like tough love is the only way to go. I'm going to go talk to Pat Getty, okay? This guy okay. has known me since I was a child coming in here. He's known my dad. He's known my dad's Maybe dad. Maybe that's the problem with this place is they let children into the bar. Come on, man. The best part about being a kid is getting fucked up. All right? Let me go talk to Mr. Pat Getty, all right? Yeah, the best part. Yeah, let's go talk to Pat in his I'm going to go to his office. I'm going to go to his office, okay? He's always in there. He's always a nice... Oh, my God! <laughs> oh! That was all Pat Getty! Looks like Pat Getty's got his well, hands full right on. now. Wow! What's going on at this bar? Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. That old Pat Getty still got it, the old bastard. Yeah, he, he's, he, he, hold on. Did you get a glimpse? Does he have a micro penis? Did you want me to check? <laughs> no, I don't want you to I check. I go I'm, back. I'll go back no, in. Don't, Dimitri, don't. Hold on. Mr. Getty. <laughs> oh, you're oh, <laughs> Uh, Did you get a glimpse, Dimitri? Uh, you know, it was tough because he was, uh, he was, it was an exposed, but, uh, no, I'd say it's pretty normal. All right, so, uh, instead of a pack of certs, he might have maybe three-quarter pack of Rolos. I'd probably say a pack of quarters at the very least. All right, so some good girth and weight. Oh, it heavy. It looked heavy. Anyway. Well, Dimitri Looks like you could use a pack of quarters right now, Dimitri. I wish that uh, I wish that I could help you, man, but it seems like you don't want any help. Listen, I, I respect you and I appreciate the help, all right? Look, Sand and Hooper, maybe I'm being a bit of a dick right now, you know? But a big one. Sand and Hooper, and you know, like maybe I'll, uh, you know, you're probably right. I should probably get out of here before something bad happens. Yeah, I'm because that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, exactly. I don't want anything bad to happen to me while I'm the old pack Gettys, okay? This place, all right, I love this place. Dimitri, well, look, I love you, man, and I want you oh. to be safe. So just really just finish that beer and get the hell out of there. Ah, uh, man, I'm going to down this thing. Don't worry about me. Hey, listen, the best thing about partying is that you never know when you're going to stop. But you know what? I'm also a gambler, and sometimes you know what they say. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to get back to it. So I'm just going to put a couple more quarters in real quick. Are you going quick. back to the machines? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, look, James, here we go. One... You see that? One quarter. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, let me blow on it for you. I'm going to, I'm going, you know who I'm going to, though. Not Maxine. Maxine, these three oh. ladies are jealous. Dimitri, she's been known to suck a man dry. 666. Six, six. All right. Come on, Maxine. Don't be a mean machine. Oh, my God! What? Woo! 15 big ones, baby! You won 15 bucks? Woo! I hey, guess, look, Maxine on. Maxine takes, but she also gives. This, new, this next song's for you. All right. Well, yeah, Dimitri, uh, thanks so much, and uh, please take care of yourself, okay? Hey, James, hope you have a great night. I had a great time. Uh, I'm gonna be here for a little while longer. I mean, with my debt paid. Yeah, yeah, you're on a roll. I'm on. A, listen, how much should I owe? It was six dollars. I just made fifteen. I got eight dollars to my name. I think I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna double the money. That's sixteen dollars. Sixteen dollars turns to thirty-two. Baby, I'm rocking and rolling. All right, well, keep on rocking. Hey, why don't you take a walk on the wild side and come see me, old Pat Getty? Hey, this Pat Getty. He's a good guy, you know. Yeah, he looks. Yeah, he looks like he's got his hands full right now. Ah. Uh, he always does. That's old Pat Getty. Anyway, <clears throat> see you next time, James. Have a great night and uh, hallelujah, huh? All right, yeah, hallelujah to you too, uh, Dimitri. Take it easy. That's Dimitri Kirez. He's live from Old Pat Getty's, a watering hole in an unknown part of town. Uh, if anyone knows where Pat Getty's is, can someone go get Dimitri?
that conversation is exactly why I've chosen not to drink in my life. Feels like a conversation with my dad. Let's move on to the end of the show because we have reached our climax, our conclusion, our precipice. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to thank, of course, Dimitri as well as Raquel. Remember, surprise, we've got an episode tomorrow night, 9 p.m., right here on twitch.tv slash at home with James. Until then, I'm James. You are you. We were here. Good night, goodbye, farewell, and of course, be well.